India's first electric motorcycle. Now that's quite the statement, isn't it? Now we have seen plenty of electric scooters in India, so we know what to expect from them. But the Revolt RB400, well, that's the first of its kind. So naturally, we have a ton of questions. So the goal today is to find out what the RB400 is all about. Just one caveat though, we haven't ridden the RB400 in the real world, just on this go-kart track here. So we won't be able to cover all the little details, but rest assured that we'll do our best to cover all the relevant questions. First things first, we want to know just how familiar the RB400 feels for someone switching from a regular petrol powered motorcycle. Hop onto the RB400 and it's shocking just how conventional it all feels. Now size wise, the bike does remind you of a 110cc motorcycle and even the bike feels quite light. It's a little over 100 kilos curved weight. So it does feel very light on its feet. Now Revolt says that the seat height on this bike is 814 mm, but it actually feels a lot lower than that and that's because the bike is actually very very slim. So even if you're like really short, 5'3", 5'2", you should be able to get your feet on the ground very comfortably. Now the overall ergos aren't very different from most normal motorcycles. The bars, they're a little bit on the narrower side, but they are a little bit low, so you do end up leaning a little bit towards them. And the foot pegs in this position, well, they are a little bit rear set, so the bike sort of feels like a sporty 150 or a 160 in terms of its posture. But if you want a more conventional riding position, you can swap these pegs around and then you get more forward set foot pegs as well. The RB400 is powered by an electric motor with a continuous power output of 3 kilowatts that's connected to the rear wheel using a belt drive. Now that doesn't sound like much, but Revolt says that this motor puts out a whopping 54 Newton meters of torque. Of course, that's regulated by the ECU, so you don't get all of it in one shot. Now the big question is, does the RB400 performance resemble some petrol powered bike, whether it's a 110cc like the style would suggest, or something higher up? Well, on this go-kart track, we found it to be close to something like a 125cc motorcycle in terms of acceleration and overall feel from the electric motor. Now, there are different riding modes the bike has, three of them which have been toggled from the handlebar itself and those will change your throttle response and your top speeds. Mode 1 gives you the softest throttle response but limits your top speed to 45 km per hour. Mode 2 bumps up throttle response and top speed to 65 km per hour. And in Mode 3, you get the full output with a top speed that's limited to 85 km per hour. Now in that mode, down this short straight, uh, on the Goka track, we saw about 68-69 km per hour, which might not seem like much, but given how small this track is, it's actually not bad. The one issue in Mode 3 was that throttle response was a little too jerky, especially in the first 10 to 15 degrees of throttle travel. Compounding this issue was the fact that the motor gets killed as soon as you go on the brakes. So that made some of the tight corners around the go-kart track feel a bit tricky. Because we couldn't mitigate the jumpy throttle by keeping it slightly open and adding a bit of braking. But under most normal riding conditions, especially in the city, if you keep the bike in modes 1 or 2, the throttle is fairly easy to modulate and it shouldn't be any problem at all. Okay, now to the most important question, range. With a 3.24 kWh lithium-ion battery pack, the RB400 has an ARI certified range of 154 km on a single charge. Of course, in the real world, you won't get as much. And the range will change according to the selected riding mode. The maximum in mode 1 and the minimum in mode 3. But Revolt claims that using a conventional 15 amp power outlet, you can recharge the battery to 75% in just 3 hours, while a full charge takes 4.5 hours. Of course, things will likely get easier when they implement their battery swap stations. And the battery swapping process is fairly straightforward 
albeit a bit fidgety. The only concern is that the battery weighs almost 20 kilos, so lifting it is no joke. And this might prove challenging if you want to carry the battery up to your home for charging indoors. Okay, now that you've addressed practicality, on to more fun things. When it comes to handling, the first thing you notice really is just how light this motorcycle feels. It tips into corners very, very easily, but at the same time, it never really feels unnerving. These MRF zapper tires, even though they are non-radials, they do a pretty good job in giving you fair amounts of grip. And on this go-kart track, the bike was quite a bit of fun to toss around out of the right corners. So while the RV400 might not be our choice on winding hill roads, it should prove to be very capable in darting through tight traffic. Out on our small first test ride, the brakes did feel fairly alright. Now it's got disc brakes at both ends and the bite is well pretty adequate. The only thing I'll say is that the levers do require a lot of pressure and that does rob them a little bit of feel. Of course, the thing that you also have to get used to is that you have the rear brake on the left lever almost like a scooter and on a motorcycle that does feel quite funny. For safety, you do get combined brakes, so when you apply the rear brake, it also works on the front to add that extra bit of safety. Now, the bike also comes with a regenerative braking system, or RBS as they call, which basically, once you go off the throttle, it'll recharge the batteries and add to the braking effect. But it doesn't feel very strong on this motorcycle, so when you roll off the gas, the bike almost feels like it's freewheeling. Now, a go-kart track is hardly the place to test out ride quality. But Revolt was good enough to humor us with these speed breakers on the track. Now if you hit them at speed, the bike does bounce a little bit because it is set up a little bit on the stiffer side. But if you approach them with a little bit of caution, the bike handles them really well. In fact, certain corners on the track were a little bumpy and the bike just took care of them. So I guess in the real world, the bike should feel just fine. And with the ground clearance, that's as much as that on a Hero X-Pulse it should be able to clear any obstacles our road can throw at it. Now for a bike that performs like a 125cc motorcycle, the RV400 is packing a whole lot of features. Upside down forks, a preload adjustable monoshock, an LED headlight with a projector for the high beam, as well as a fully digital instrument cluster. There's a lot of software here too, thanks to the built-in 4G SIM card and a connected app which will let you do everything from start or stop the bike, find the nearest swap station, order a battery online, geofence the bike, and even play a simulated engine note through the built-in speaker. Okay, that last bit is a bit more gimmicky than practical. But for a complete rundown of all the connected features, check out the link in the description below. Now, quality was a concern for a lot of you when you first saw the motorcycle and on that front, the RV400 does feel pretty alright. Now, there are some odd panel gaps here and there, but the overall quality of plastics and other components is actually fairly up to the mark and it's not very different from something like a 125cc marble motorcycle. Some of you did have concerns that the Revolt RV400 looks like a rebadged Chinese motorcycle. And we are not going to argue that it's not. But Revolt does assure us that at this point, 70% of the bike has already been localized and by the end of the year, 100% will be. To top things off, Revolt says that they will offer a 7.5 year, 1,50,000km warranty on the battery. Now combine all this with the fact that the RV400 is a fairly capable and handsome motorcycle, do its origins really matter? Now the most remarkable part about this Revolt RV400 is just how unremarkable it feels. And don't get me wrong, I'm not being negative in any way. But the fact of the matter is that the mental adjustment required to move from a petrol powered motorcycle to an electric one, well on this bike, it's hardly there. So while it's not the best bike for long distances on the highway or even some fun weekend riding, for a lot of urban commuters, it's enough reason to go green. And that's not for some environmental reasons, 
but simply because this is a simple easy to use no nonsense motorcycle that will be a lot more economical run than any petrol powered bike so what about price well you can buy the rb400 at mrp that's my revolt plan basically that means you pay rupees 399 per month for 3 years but unlike a loan or a lease the bike is registered on your name from day 1 it is your bike and revolt also takes care of insurance as well as servicing costs for those 3 years which for this electric bike basically involves three brake pad and brake fluid changes and one change of tires there are no moving parts that will undergo wear and tear in any case to know more about how this incredible pricing scheme works in detail click on the link in the description below so while this doesn't make this bike cheap it certainly makes it affordable and while the revolt rv400 might not be too revolutionary in terms of technology in terms of the purchasing experience it just changes the game